Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of Astronomy for Beginners. Now, the summer period is coming and we're drawing towards July, August time and the nights are going to get darker which is a good sign for us astronomers meaning that we're going to have longer nights uh, dark nights are going to get darker and we want to get our telescopes and our cameras set up and a, and a tripod or mount set up ready to do some uh, visual astronomy or taking great pictures of the moon or the planets or any uh, deep sky objects you see in the sky however so we like to get our setups ready so we don't have any problems however if your own of a rack of pinion focus of telescope like this uh, one or two millimeter sky watcher refractor you might have come across similar problems to certain telescopes and these these are the ones that i've have witnessed with this type of telescope now this applies to a lot of variety of telescopes you own but this is just going to cover the rack and pinion focuses for, uh, for this uh, video guide. So I've come across uh, similar problems and one of them is this. And as you can see, I'm really trying to use the focuser. Bear in mind that the, the focus clamps are loose. Okay, and as you can see, the focusing tube on the telescope is is really stiff. Now, again, this could be a variety of problems. Okay, and again, when you're adjusting your focusing tube for your camera, for example. You're trying to focus it and you get, you're doing a lot of unnecessary movements and you could uh, ruin your polar alignment uh, whilst doing this. So again, this is the one problem that I faced on certain rack and pinion focuses. The other problem is if we take a closer look, you've got your telescope set up with your camera or you've got a photical reducer or any lens system or any eyepieces, particularly if you're using uh, two inch Barlow lenses or two inch eyepiece lenses or diagonals when you're using heavy duty equipment you may come across this problem where you'll be focusing and as you're focusing on a given subject like the moon or star or a galaxy you'll find this problem and already uh, the, the, the focuser is slipping and as you can see here, it's very loose, it's not holding it, and also what I found annoying is when you're trying to focus your image, or you're looking through uh, your eyepiece, you can't keep it still, and it keeps slipping, and every time it slips, it's quite annoying, and it's fiddly, so you have to use your lock screw to try and lock it. Now, ideally you don't want it to just use the lock because again it can slip through the the locking mechanism so again this is unacceptable and the third problem is because it's so slack and the gears are very sloppy you may come across this as well look at that and you've got a very sloppy free play so again uh, these are the sort of problems you might face on your telescope setup. That if you again, if you're taking pictures, and sometimes when you've got sloppy focuses like this, can cause a lot of problems for a lot of, lot of beginners. So if you've got any of these problems that I've just shown you, here in this video guide, I'm going to show you how to correct them uh, by improving on this telescope on your focuser tube and get the best out of your telescope. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a closer look on the equipment you're going to use. So the equipment you're going to use are as follows. First off you're going to need a sheet of A4 paper, a pack of Q-tips 
or cotton buds. You may want to use the isopropyl alcohol. This is also mentioned in one of my video guides. This is also very good at uh, degreasing and cleaning uh, parts as well. So a bottle of that. A used toothbrush. A pair of scissors. A pen. Ideally a marker pen. Usually with a lot of sky watches you usually get a issued screwdriver like this one. This is a cross point. A roll of sellotape. Usually depending on your telescope brand you may need to use an allen key. Now this is a, uh, a two millimeter allen key that you use for focuses. I'll explain why you need to use this further on. Good old trusty lithium grease. This is bicycle grease that you can get from a lot of good uh, cycle shops. Uh, it's very good for uh, lubricating gearing systems on your mounts and so forth. And again, the, the TF2, good old lithium grease. You can pick these up for about three or four pounds a tube like this. Okay, and it's, it's really good grease. And as described on collimating my Newtonian reflector, I use a laser collimator. Again, I will briefly describe how this is used in the process. So let us begin. We've got our Skywatcher 102mm refractor. And first off, before we do any uh, major work onto the focuser itself, First off, you want to remove any uh, accessories or eyepieces or cameras before you start stripping out components. So you take off the camera. Uh, it could be a good idea to just remove the scope rings as well. Okay, we don't really need to use our scope rings. Okay, and just remove it from there. Anything that's that you're not going to uh, strip down. Okay, get them out of the way. So you just have the bare tube itself. Now, when you're taking the focus apart, you can either uh, take uh, the actual major assembly itself apart. Using the screwdriver, you have three screws. Okay, you may wish to remove uh, three of these screws. However, if you remove some of these free screws, you may lose a bit of collimation uh, between the focuser tube. So you may want to take some of these free screws, or you may wish to just remove this part here and clean the item itself. You know, depending on how you do it, you, know, you can do it in several uh, several ways. You can do it, okay? But if you want to take it apart. Be prepared to do a bit of collimation. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to do the hard way just to demonstrate. Okay, three screws removed and you can withdraw the tube out. You can then put the tube safely away and here we just have the focuser itself. Using the screwdriver is remove the four screws at the bottom. Now if you've got sloppy gears you may wish to want to tighten these up okay and gives you the correct tension to reduce the sloppiness. However we are just going to strip it all out, take the screws apart We then remove the screws, put them in safe place. You'll be able to pop this out, and as you can see, there'll be a, there, there is your plate, your mounting plate, your tension plate, and then you have your focus wheel, which is your pinion gear. Okay, this is your pinion gear, and as you can see, it's coated with this horrible tacky grease. 
Now it's very sticky and usually you'll find it's either a dark coloured or a clear coloured grease. Now some of the grease is okay but trouble is when this gets old during time this tacky grease will then become stiff, it will start to harden and then it just won't lubricate anything. And then this is where you'll get your tight uh, gears or your sloppy gears. Okay, you can then withdraw your tube like so. You pull out the entire tube assembly, okay, and you can see there's grease there. This is your rack here, okay, and usually what you find is inside here are your Teflon pads, okay, so you've got Teflon pads here. Also with this focuser, there, with these Allen keys, a lot of focusers have tension uh, focusers. These are like alignment screws here. These are basically Allen screws. Not all focusers will have these, but you may have two of these on each of the Teflon pads, or uh, two, uh, three sets of these Allen screws adjacent to each other. Again, they can be collimated to collimate your focus tube in line with your objective lens. So again, uh, these are the only two adjustment screws here. The rest is all fixed, but that just depends on your focus tube. But on this focuser, there's only two adjustment screws. So again, these are just held in carefully with this, this pad, pad in here. Now, while you're doing this uh, DIY strip down, you can uh, ideally you can use a uh, blackboard paint to darken the tube if it isn't. Darkening the tube inside will help to increase your contrast on your images and stop stray light from entering the, the lens of your eyepiece or your objective lens and gives you stray light or false colouring. So again, darkened tubes like this one which is already darkened, I don't need to go any further. Again, you may wish to darken inside of the focus tube itself here, but there's no real need to because this is already darkened. However, on some models like your 80mm refractor, which is the short tube variant, may to be painted in. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean the components carefully and with these is we're going to remove some of the old grease and again to do this we got the trusty isopropyl alcohol you may want to use uh, degreasing uh, uh, agents like penetrating oil to remove it that just does a good job okay and again using a bit of tissue or rag just dampen the isopropyl alcohol and just start cleaning the components. Unfortunately, using tissue is a bad example of using uh, cleaning products. So you need to use, uh, because the grease is so tacky, I wouldn't advise you using tissue. Now this is just to demonstrate not to use tissue in this process, because it doesn't work. So use basically rags, okay, to do this. And as you can see, to about tissue, it tends to stick onto the gears and you don't want bits of debris and, and stuff like that. So again, don't use tissue, use cloth rags. The only way you're going to get uh, to achieve this to, to remove some of this dirt and grease. So, use proper rag like this one, okay? And you can use the isopropyl alcohol that way, okay? Dump in the rag, okay, and just again clear it all up like so. You need to really get rid of the old grease. Now, depending on the grease, you can use a WD 40, which is a, a very good degreaser as well. So, again, using WD 40, all right, like so, you can also. Clean up uh, your components, okay, like so. All right, let that settle in, okay, and start removing some of the old grease. 
and as you can see it's extremely tacky okay and this this stuff is tough seriously tough grease now because it sticks with the gears using the toothbrush like this will help to if you just brush the uh, toothbrush like so you can remove some of the old grease between the gears okay so again brush downwards evenly uh, along the the spur gear itself okay spray a little bit more dbd 40 okay and just keep brushing along that gear okay like so once all the grease is removed and as you can see we're starting to see uh, it's getting very clean now okay we let that dry off overnight or wipe it with a clean cloth again use, because of the grease being very tough using gentle strokes along the uh, gear itself just brush off the old grease okay you will get this grease removed okay and just keep brushing it and then clean up with your rag keep doing it spray some more dvd 40 or alcopropyl alcohol again depend on the type of grease that you're trying to remove it will get it off but again it's a lot easier with dvd 40 because it softens that grease especially this stuff this stuff is ninja once the tube is dry okay you can see now perfect there's hardly any grease there it's all removed so we put that to one side we then clean off the actual bracket itself and again clean the bracket and the tensioner using the rag and then that's perfectly clean clean the bracket okay that's clean then this can be a bit tricky so again with this one you gotta be careful you gotta be careful not to spray too much uh, degreaser along this tube so you're gonna be ca very careful so what I do is spray some DVD for it or on a rag okay and just just clean the inside of this if you struggle to remove some of it use a brush like that and just brush it off between uh, the mounting plate so you don't want to get some of the uh, penetrating oil uh, running down your tube because when you do put your focuser tube on place in place you don't want some of the penetrating oil to go down your tube onto your objective lens so again this is the reason why I just spray a little bit on the rag and just clean it off like this way and then it should be nice and clean just like that and that's what you want once all those parts are sorted out you can now assemble the part together so what we're going to do is we're going to and we're going to use some lithium grease and again what we're, first off what we're going to do is apply a little bit of grease and we're going to place some a film of grease inside the teflon pad and then again you just run it across here like so all right you only need a little bit you don't need too much again get another bit of grease here and lubricate the other teflon pad and again you only need a small amount like so because of the plate you may wish to uh, put a bit of film of grease here and the good thing about this lithium grease is good and safe on plastics pack some grease along your components like so so we're gonna pack our pinion gear okay so we're gonna pack it up you then pack your rack okay we're then gonna place our bracket so you place your bracket here 
you then slide the tube in place like so so it's now slip slots in there place your bracket here now this is a bit fiddly at first but you've got to have your tension here okay once the brackets in line okay so you got your thing in line now the whole idea is to is to put tension on there as you can see here that's where the the plate goes your tension plate okay it can be a bit fiddly to line up okay but it's, you see where it's all curved you put the flat piece there and then what you're going to do is you're going to place your four black screws here just get them lined up carefully okay if you get two in adjacent to each other it's not it's not a problem just use your screwdriver and then just tighten each one bit by bit then you place the two other screws now because it's on the spring tension okay you can do your adjustments later on all right but you just want to fix your screws for the time being okay and as you can see here it's already looking a lot more rigid okay and again work the grease in between uh, the component now again one thing you gotta be careful when you put fresh grease if you do get a lot of grease that's uh, that's on there okay just wipe off the access using a dry rag so again just re remove some of the access again alongside the top part here and again clean the base up itself all right and around the focus wheel once you clean components you can see already massive improvement on the focuser okay it's a lot more smoother we're going to adjust the uh, the friction later on but again what we're doing is we're working the grease in there on the focus wheel that's looking a lot better now we're going to put it back onto the main tube but before we get back on just make sure that inside uh, the actual tube itself is to remove any old debris inside the tube okay you don't want that to land at the back of your lens system okay so any debris or paint chippings around this tube here just give it a good wipe using a rag so now the main problem is now is with this tube uh, disconnected now your most applications usually will be fixed in there okay so when you fix the tube inside like that you're going to need to collimate the fo main focuser to the actual objective now you can do this without uh, you can remove the complete setup okay just by removing the focus wheel and do it that way but I don't really like doing that because you might get some of the debris or some of the grease in the tube I rather dis disconnect the whole thing to get completely so that you're not going to risk getting any dirt or grime that gets in in the actual objective lens so what we're going to do is we're going to fix uh, the screws back on like so now one thing I've noticed, because there's a lot of play there, okay, you're going to have to, when you tighten up these screws here, is uh, you're going to have to collimate it. Now the good thing is with this setup is it doesn't need to be, it's only a crude collimation, it'll get you uh, near as damn it. But what you're going to try and do is try and put your screws in first before you start tightening them. Okay, so you're going to get a bit of free play. Also, with the focuser, is uh, there's no need to mark the actual tube itself, okay? Because as I took this uh, this main focuser, as you're aware, is that it's fixed. There's only three screws, 
and the focuser was in line with the Skywatcher uh, logo okay if the logo is slightly off and all that then you might need to just put a bit of uh, tape and all that before you remove it so we'll just tighten we'll just nip these up okay just nip these up Take off, you can take off the cap or you can take off the, the actual juice shield itself. This will just pull apart. We'll put the tube to one side. I'll explain what's going to go on. Get yourself a sheet of paper. We're going to place the tube. So I took off my juice shield and then. I'm going to draw around the circle. So I've got it. I've got it flat face there, and I'm going to draw around that circle. So I'm going to draw my tabs again. Put my circle disc out. Once my circle is done, fold it. Okay, you can do that, that method, or you can draw the lines. Again, you can fold it that way. Carefully, you get it spot on all the way around so I'm making sure you fold all the way around so and that gives you the dead center of your dot and again you can do it that way instead of just using the rule and also drawing across using your rule side by side along that way but again there is this method and if you're very good you can see this dead center okay draw a little hole there that's your dead center and again that's pretty accurate as well okay now to be sure best way is if you've got the crease here once you've drawn that hole it's best to just uh, use an iron okay use no steam and just iron that circle out okay with a hot iron okay so you give you a dead flat surface if if the if these folded edges happen to be uh, a bit of a pain to line up your main tube so what we're going to do is we're going to face this down and we're going to place uh, the tube back on there and we're just going to tape up uh, put these tabs up and we're going to tape off the ends so now I've got my tube lined up along my circle we're going to fold the tabs up like so and using some sellotape first off we're going to just tape up your tabs carefully not to move the tube you then Get your laser color meter, get your inch and a quarter eyepiece holder adapter. Now if you've got an Antares twist lock adapter, this will give you dead center of the tube. Okay, so you then just tighten that up like so. Place it into the focuser itself. Tighten up your lock screws. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to put on, switch it on, and what you're going to do, once they're taped up again, and as you can see here, but tighten up these screws, these ones here, okay, tighten them up, once you're near enough, then you can start adjusting the screws here and here. So again, uh, not much uh, 
collimation I need to do on this one. So again, all I do is with that circle here, I just tighten up the screws. Once I've checked, I'm almost there. In fact, a few more adjustments on the tensioning. Again, it'll take a few times, a few tweaks. So now, after careful tweaking of these uh, screws, and the top screw is here to just get the right amount of tension I'm lined up already now I've got a slight bit of free movement when I move the the, the actual gears itself so I've got a slight bit of movement on the gears itself okay but um, as it sits once I get my camera lens and, and my eyepiece and all that it sits squarely enough now this is only just a basic Acromat refractor and because there's only one adjustment side, that is the closest I can get at the moment. I mean, I'm slightly out, but because there's only one adjustment screw on one side here, okay, it's very tricky to try and get the right amount of tension, okay, and right amount of adjustment with this focusing tube. Now, the more expensive refractors, like your ED uh, Apples, or your, ap or your Apochromatics, or your triplet uh, refractors, there'll be more of these screws okay so again you get a much better alignment alright now and this is just an acromat and this is the closest I can get now this is already a massive improvement uh, when it was initially uh, was before but as you can see here I've got my focusing tube it's it's nice and smooth but it's also stiff as well so you want it nice and stiff but also smooth as well so it is quite tricky you might need to do several attempts to get this and again this is the closest I can get with this uh, refractor alone it's pretty crude but it will help to make sure that your focusing uh, unit is quite accurate as can and again there's no free play on the actual focus tube as well so again it's, it's, it's just the right amount of friction it's smooth but it also there's not hardly any play on the actual focusing tube okay and that's what you want once your alignment's on there you just remove the uh, the actual disc itself so remove the disc okay uh, you may smudge a little bit of grease on your lens okay clean it with the correct appropriate clean cleaner if you referred that to my last video guide on cleaning uh, uh, a refracting telescope okay refer to that guide remove the the laser collimator once it's all uh, in place you can then replace your dew shield like so okay fix the dew shield and replace your dust cap so once you've got your tube rings and your telescope assembled together, okay, make sure everything's tight, make sure you get your finder scope connected. And basically now what you could do is connect uh, your camera or your telescope and all that and basically just give it a good test, okay. Uh, again, test the functionality and again I'm tilting it to 90 degrees, okay, to extreme height. Alright, and as you can see already there's already a massive improvement on the focuser and you can see that the focusing wheel is not slipping as you see here in this picture if we take a zoom in in close look okay there is a bit of binding but there's a bit of friction okay and it's as you can see here fork my hands away and it's smooth there is a bit of resistance in there but you want a bit of resistance so it doesn't slip but again it's smooth movement 
and no free play on the tube if I move the tube like so and I'm, really, I'm actually moving the actual mount itself so if I try and hold the mount yep yeah, there's no free play on the actual draw tube and again it's it, there is a bit of friction but it's enough friction to hold my camera um, a photo reducer and an extension tube so there's quite a bit of weight here and there's about 500 grams holding down on this draw tube and again that's a lot of weight so when you're fitting a CCD camera or DSLR or heavy duty 2 inch eyepieces again you want that focuser to try and hold that resistance All right, and that's perfect I mean you need some friction so that it will grip but again, the final adjustment is on the lock, with lock ring itself, okay? So you can lock it in position of your, uh, of your locking stud here. So your locking knob will hold it, but again, without uh, releasing it, again, you can feel already this massive improvement right, all the way down to the draw, draw tube, okay? And all the way up. Now, there might be a bit of... Uh, a bit of friction and there might be a bit of roughness okay but again as you work the grease in okay do full extensions of the focus wheel and just work that grease in it takes some time for it to work in but once it works in and it warms up it will then start to get better and better as it goes along okay and it's already starting to work already and I'm working that grease in there into that gear wheel and okay brilliant but again look massive improvement already as you've seen from the last from the beginning of the video and you saw how bad the focuser was uh, with just just a few bit of uh, with uh, just a few repair techniques to get this adjusted and good to get this collimated to your refractor it's already a massive improvement already okay and again, this is a lot of weight here on this uh, focuser. And don't forget, this is an Acromat refractor, so it can only take so much weight, this focuser. All right, I can just draw a line here to prove that it's not moving. All right, but already, why should I when it's already holding? And that's an exact adjustment you want. Okay, and uh, again, I hope this video guide helps you. Okay. And please feel free to comment in the video. Bear in mind, this uh, repair procedures does take a while, particularly when you're trying to collimate your refractor so that your focuser is in line with the objective lens. It took me about quite a few attempts to get it right, okay? But again, take your time, you will get there. It just takes a bit of practice. So I'm not going to deny it that it's going to be all simple and it's going to be quite easy. No, it's not. I mean, that, that setup that I just did there it was very tricky. So again, I'm not going to blag my case. It is quite difficult. It's worth it a long run. And already, uh, to prove if you're adjusted properly, just do a quick star test. Okay, just do a quick star check test. If your stars are pinpoint, okay with no halos and all that and they're quite sharp even when you're over focus okay but they need to be nice and round if they're not then you need to just slightly adjust the focuser to you get it right but I've tested it and it's already pretty sharp anyway and don't forget there's not much there's not many adjustments on this type of focuser being an acromat refractor but with the ED Apples or your triplet refractors, there's going to be a lot more adjustment and it'd be a lot more tricky. And ideally, if I was going to use that, I would recommend uh, to use your laser collimator or uh, fit or use a, um, a star test, one of those uh, artificial stars, look through it and then adjust it accordingly. Okay. But that will go on a later date on another video guide. So again, already massive improvement. We're also available on the Facebook group. Okay, so join us there. It's me for beginners. We also have uh, got a lot of good advice. And also, 
And if you like my videos, uh, please click on the subscribe button, okay, and then join my group, uh, and you'll keep updated on the, the newer video guides, okay, and there's a lot of information there to help you out into astronomy, and uh, please feel free to use that channel, okay, and look at the videos at your own pleasure, and again, just click that subscribe button, just here, alright, and uh, thanks again, thanks for watching, and clear skies to you all.